at 10 a.m. and we are working on an ongoing project. So um, let me show you the piece that we are working on. So it is this um, waterfall dresser and let's see. So I've painted it already in five different paint couture colors. So I painted the top and the sides with shale stone. Then the first drawer is painted in Sophia. Next drawer is candlelight, followed by um, modern rattan. And lastly, but never least, is Guac and Roll from the CC Restyled Remix Collection. So um, if you watched us Wednesday night on our two lives Wednesday, we had one on our own page and one on Pink Tours page. Um, you might know that we are making this into a, into a suitcase dresser. So um, what I mean by a suitcase dresser is that each shore front is gonna look like a vintage suitcase like this. And along with looking like this, it's gonna have the details that you'd have on a suitcase dresser, on a suitcase. So, you know, the clasps, handles, um, things like this, little little patterns. So let me put this away. Just, just wanted to show you that real quick. Okay, so um, as I said before, we have painted two coats of paint on each drawer and two coats of, well actually only one coat of paint so far on the rest of the dresser. So we're gonna get started this morning by decorating our drawers. That's what we're gonna do. So this first drawer I have painted in Sophia from Paint Couture. Okay, so, so what we're gonna do is start painting these drawers in a way that makes them look like antique or vintage suitcases or steamer trunks even. And each one is going to be completely different. Each one is gonna be completely different. So this is the top drawer and um, the hardware is also gonna be completely different for each one. So this, for the first drawer, I have two choices of hardware and I haven't decided which one. It's either gonna be this red one or this brass one. So what I wanna do for this particular drawer um, is start painting um, the designs on there. And I'm going to be using a stencil. So you see on a lot of suitcases that have some stripes like that. So that's what we're going to do on this first one to start because we're going to be doing more than just that. So I have a couple of these really great striped stencils. I think I'm gonna use, actually, wait a second. You know what, I think what I'm gonna do with this one is put one stripe up in the middle. Well, let's see, hmm, no. All right. Let's see, and, I, and, and it's really important that I do this with you and you can see the, pros, the process and the thought, you know, involved. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this stripe, I'm gonna start this stripe six inches out from this hole right here. And I'm gonna take a um, pencil and just put a teeny mark here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Boy, that's really a teeny mark. You can hardly see it. <laughs> Let's see. Put a little bit of a bigger mark, which I still can barely see. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side, six inches. And that's where I'm gonna start my stencils, my, my, um, my, uh, striped stencils. So let's see, do you want to start? I'm just trying to get an idea 
of what that's gonna look like. Hmm, I kind of like that. Okay, so I'm putting my stencil on the edge of that little mark that I just put there. And I, especially with a project like this, and the stencil doesn't really fit exactly, I'm gonna use some painter's tape to mark uh, and to hold my stencil down. Some people choose to not use tape. I just find it much easier when I do. So I'm just gonna put one piece on either side. And because um, I want this to look like a suitcase, I'm also going to just measure out and make sure this is even because it is kind of hard to tell. Okay. All right, that's good. We've got it now. Okay. Sometimes just using your eye is not um, gonna work. And then when this is in the drawer, if they're not straight, it's gonna look funny. So I'm going to use another paint couture color called Russian Red. And it's this nice bright bold red. Okay. And I'm using a stencil brush. So I get these stencil brushes at any craft store. Um, they're just a dense, flat bristle brush. Um, I don't pay much money for them. You shouldn't have to. And um, that's what I like to use. So you can see I'm using very, very little paint and that's still too much paint. So I'm gonna dab off most of my paint. A good measure is um, when your brush looks like it has paint on it, but it's dry. That's, that's really a good measure. So what I'm gonna do here is, even though I have my stencil tape down, I'm still gonna hold it down and I'm just gonna start dabbing really lightly. I don't want my paint to be heavy. And again, if my stencil looks wet, I've got too much paint on here. I'm just continuing and I'm holding down my stencil in the areas where I'm stenciling. This is a reusable stencil. It's made out of mylar. Okay. Now, I'm going really lightly with the, um, the paint and I'm doing that intentionally because if I keep adding more and more and more paint into one spot, I'm going to end up with what's called bleed through and that's when your stencil starts looking blurry. And notice I'm dabbing with the, pen, with the uh, brush. You don't want to go back and forth or side to side. The reason being if you do that you can get the brush underneath the um, stencil, which you don't want to do. So now I'm going to go back to where I started and I'm going to, I'm going to do a second coat. And that's what you want to do rather than just continuing to add more and more paint. When, when you do that, you're going to have bleed through. Now, if you didn't have a stencil and you wanted to do stripes, it's really easy to use uh, painter's tape and, and we've done a couple of tutorials on how to do that. Like I said before, when you're stenciling, dabbing is the easiest way to do it. You definitely do not want to go like this or like that with your brush because you're just about guaranteed to get it underneath the stencil. So now that I taped it on both sides, I can very easily lift it up like this and see how it looks and pull it off. And you don't wait till it dries. Okay, let me get that out of the way. And I don't know how well you can see, so I'm gonna, whoops. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see how it looks so far.
So that's our first drawer so far. And again, this is gonna be a vintage suitcase dresser. So I'm gonna put this back. We are gonna be doing more on this drawer, but um, you know, we're doing one step at a time. So let me put this back in. Doesn't that look cute so far? Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out my second drawer. And my second drawer is painted in Hank Couture as well, and this color is called Candlelight. It's a very pretty off-white. It has almost the littlest bit of, <clears throat> I guess, yellow in it. It's not yellow for sure, but it has a little hue of like a honey. Very pretty. Okay, I will need my ruler again. So I'm doing something very different in this with this drawer. Each, each drawer is gonna be completely different. And with this drawer, so with this drawer, I'm gonna be doing a herringbone pattern. So you've probably seen suitcases that have a herringbone pattern on them. And I'm just trying to decide whether I wanna use the bigger one or the smaller one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a stripe on this side and a stripe on this side. And then everything in the middle of that is going to be the herringbone. So I'm gonna do the stripes first. That would probably make the most sense. I'm gonna do a stripe. So I'm gonna use my, um, my frog tape. So I'm gonna use frog tape. This is my favorite tape to use when I do stripes because it, it just is awesome. I'm gonna do a stripe. Let's see, I'm gonna start my stripe at two and a half inches. There we go. And I know this stuff seems a little tedious, but you know, you wanna get it right. You really do. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is get a wider piece. And I'm doing, I'm getting a wider piece because I want, um, I want my, um, my stripe to be wider. So this, this particular piece is gonna be my guide for the stripe. This, the great thing about this project is that we are gonna be, we're doing so many different techniques in one project. Now, I said before, this stuff seems tedious and, and to some degree it is, but it's gonna save you a lot of aggravation later, I promise. All right, while that is drying, I am going to do this stencil. So I'm gonna, start over here and just get it right inside the tape and right inside the top and the bottom of the drawer, and I think I've done that pretty well. Um, and now I'm just gonna tape it down. So I might as well use this old tape before I throw it away. I'm actually only gonna tape it down on one side because I have that little bit of paint there and I don't wanna pull that off. 
So for this piece, I'm going to use, let me find my color. I am going to use blue. If you know me at all, you know I love blue. I just can't just, I think I'm going to use navy. So let me find midnight blue. So I'm going to use midnight blue, which is, it looks royal blue, but it, it, it dries very, very dark. I love navy and like a cream color together. I think they're really sharp. And again, I only need my lid because I'm only using a teeny bit of paint. Get a new stencil brush. Okay. So I'm, uh, again, I'm using a very flat, dense brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on there and I'm going to offload a lot of it and I'm just going to start so I like to stencil either by dabbing or swirling like that I find the swirling to be a little quicker but if you're starting out dabbing is definitely easier if you're just beginning I love stenciling patterns because I, I love the look of patterns and it's really easy and quick because you're not like stenciling a word or like a picture of something. So if it's not perfect, who cares? Now, I know I'm only putting a light coat, but that's what I want to do. I'm going to go back. Because I'm putting so little, by the time I get done here, that part's going to be dry and I can go back and apply a second coat. If I just keep applying paint on, the, on one spot, I'm pretty much guaranteeing that I'm going to have some bleed through, which I don't want to have. There we go. Okay, so I still have a little bit left to do here, but I'm gonna do that on my own so you don't have to sit and watch me continue to stencil. But I will just show you um, how easy it is to match up a pattern when you're continuing. So all I need to do is just find a row and put my stencil on it and then I can continue just like that so super easy right so I will do that today when I'm done with you guys I don't want you to have to sit and watch that okay so um, my stripe is also going to be in midnight blue and I'm going to use one of these blue ice brushes and I'm going to use a little bit more paint than I did when I stenciled, but not much more because, again, I want to avoid bleed through. I don't want, I don't want the paint to get in between my, um, 
my tape and my piece. So I'm just gonna put one light coat. I also am not gonna go from side to side because I don't want my brush to get underneath the tape. Do it over here. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is let this dry. What'd you say, Lauren? Oh, thank you. So I'm going to let these two dry and then put, let me just see if I can put another coat with it. Oh, actually, I can. No, not really. Okay, so I'm going to let these two dry and then I'm going to put another coat and then I'll just pull off the tape. So have a great Friday, have a great weekend. If you watch this later or think of any questions, please post them in the comments and I will get back to you. And feel free to share this on your page. Thank you so much for watching, I always appreciate it.